going to start talking about permutations. That's where you have a bunch of objects. We're still going to do it with our spaces, but you're arranging objects. So, for example, if you took the letters of Kelowna and there's seven letters and you wanted to rearrange them, you'd have seven decisions you'd have to make. Your first decision, what letter are you going to put first? Well, you could choose any of the seven letters. That could be your first letter. Now you've used up one. You don't know which one. Maybe you used up the W. Maybe you used up the O. You don't know which one you used up. But now, how many choices do you have for your second letter? Six. Because one of them is gone. You don't know which one. One of them is gone. You'd have six choices. I mean, we could, we're, we're not going to want to, but we could, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, we could make a tree diagram of this, and then off of this K, there would only be six because you couldn't have the K, the K's already gone, so there'd just be the E, the L, the O, the W, the N, and the A. And then you could do branches off those, it would get too full, and you see your tree diagram would be huge. So our spaces work really good. You used up a second letter. How many letters are left? Five. Now how many? Then four. Then three. Then two. Then one. Seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Multiply this all out. Mental math. Five thousand four. Right? Yes, it is. Okay. So we're also going to get introduced to a new mathematical symbol. This is your new mathematical symbol for the day. The exclamation mark. Now in math, this doesn't mean that you just should shout out the number one. This is like, one! Really excited. And this is like, two! But it means something. So I'm going to tell you, first of all, that one is just one. And two is just two. But three is six. And four, oh my goodness, it's already 24. What the heck is happening? Any ideas what five? What is happening? How did he figure out the 120? So you took this one, this one you multiplied by 2, then this one you multiplied by 3, then this one you multiplied by 4, and this one you multiplied by 5. Which means that the 120 was really the 5 times the 24. And the 24 was really the 4 times the 6. And the 6 was really the 3 times the 2. And the 2 was really the 2 times the 1. So the exclamation mark in mathematics is a way for us to start at a number and multiply it all the way down to 1. And although the number 1 isn't that exciting, and neither is the number 2, after two, like two is like neighbors with one. It has to keep things calm because one likes to go to bed early and sleep in. Two is quiet at night, right? But three starts to party. First exclamation mark starts going crazy. And then after that, like, you get to six. Oh, my goodness, it's already at 720. The numbers get huge very, very fast. And the reason that this is an important notation is because in permutations, we're counting things like Kelowna, you have seven spaces, your numbers go down by one each time. Be nice to write this in a shorter form. And it happens enough in mathematics that they created this notation. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to type this into your calculator and tell me what it is. So you're going to have to find the exclamation button on your calculator. Already there it is. It's big number already. And this is called factorial. 
factorial notation. And another thing that we can highlight as you're getting out your calculators. And in factorial notation, factorial notation works for every number bigger than one. For every number bigger than one, you just start at that number and keep going down by one until you get to one. So if I said, what's 200 factorial? Oh my goodness. 200 factorial would be 200 times 199 times 198. And you would keep on going until you got to 3 times 2 times 1. And it would be so big if you type in your calculator, your calculator explodes. It's like, oh. I don't know if it makes that noise. But it's like, it's too much, too big to handle. But this is a special definition. Ooh, I can't spell definition with the highlighter very easily. By definition, zero factorial is one. Negative factorials don't make sense. There is decimal factorials, which is a whole other branch of math that we don't worry about, so we never do decimal factorials. We just do whole numbers, and there's going to be some formulas that we need a zero factorial for the formula to work. So by definition, zero factorial is equal to one. It has to be for formulas to work. It doesn't make sense by the formula. The formula says anything factorial, start with that number and go down until you get to one. So we'll even have to do some algebra factorials. If you had n factorials, and n is a positive whole number, you would start with n. And then you would multiply by one less. And then you would multiply by another one less. And you would keep going until you got to three times two times one. So we'll do some algebra with this exclamation mark as well. Everybody find the exclamation mark on their calculator. If you have a graphing calculator, I can show you that on the graphing calculator, you can maybe push buttons. I'm trying to push the number nine. There it is. And hit the math button. And then go over the probability and number four as the exclamation mark. And then push enter. And of course, nine factorial is a huge number already. 362,880. Oh, I forgot how much fun today's lesson was. It's going to make your head swim, make you think super hard, maybe give you a little bit of a headache, I'm not sure. Okay. Puzzle designer decides to scramble the letters of the word education. You know what's cool about the word education? In English, it has all five vowels. And E is A, the I, the O, and the U. All in one word. So then you can start thinking, are there other words that do this? Yes. I'll give you a puzzle afterwards. See if you can think of the shortest one. I can think of a... But we'll do the question first. The puzzle designer decides to scramble the words of education. And education has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. So we could either do this with spaces and draw nine spaces and say I have nine choices for the first letter. I've used up a letter. Now there's only eight letters left then seven, then six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one. But it'd be a lot quicker if I just wrote nine factorial. Trying 
to memory puzzles. Can you think of how short a word I think I can think of one? Now, apparently, there is a one cell someone decided in biology to name a one. A single cell organism using all five vowels. I don't know how you say it exactly. That's what it's called. You see one go like, hey, there's a. Like, you see that? It went right by. And it's spelled with that. But there is a. Um, there is a tree that uses all five vowels. It's a big tree, like you know those big redwood trees. It's like one of those kind of trees that uses all five vowels. Do you know your trees? It only has seven letters, so it only has two consonants and five vowels. It starts with an S. Do you know this tree? It's not a spruce. It's a sequoia tree. Can you spell sequoia tree? Yeah, that's fancy. That's good. Right? All five vowels, only seven letters long. Crazy. Good Scrabble word. That is a good. That's a good. Um, you want to get your friends with uh, hand notes. Because they're going to guess a couple vowels, and then they're going to be screwed. Because they're not going to keep guessing vowels. You get them. Play for money. You play for money for money? Start now. You get them. Make some money off your credit. OK, questions for practice. Education might be a good one too. But maybe they get that one. How would we do that? What did we do? We figured out how many ways, permutations is how many ways you can rearrange those letters. And nine factorial, which we figured out from our calculator here. 362 is 80. Is the answer. Questions for practice on this one? Three, five, and nine.